previously on Unbalanced Encounters. Severin, there's a whole thing here about Tanin. You pull out a tome. It's organized by year. The last major battle with the Tanin was on the back of information gathered by Commander Nasir Antony. I have learned that parents lie to their children a lot. That it's just being shitty to your kids. June, much me, we might want to be normal kids. I'm the Lord Governor of Agrivar. You're the daughter of murderer of the previous Lord Governor of Agrivar, at least conspirator to murder. It's not really much about us that comes in as normal. More people, I don't know how else people would just spring up. I mean, how hard is it to get a few hundred impersonators and then after you feel comfortable enough to slit your brother's throat in the night? Remember that part where I said we could turn all this around to us going and dealing with a god up in the desert? Prove that a god still exists? You pull the rug out from the Empressar's propaganda machine? Not to mention, we get this god on our side. All those lands that you seem to have lost come back underneath you. I believe that the god of which you all speak is the same gluttonous hole in the bond. Welcome to another episode of Unbalanced Encounters, the only show that dares to ask, what if lizards had feelings? I'd ask how everyone was doing, but we just did this take and I forgot <laughs> to hit record. <laughs> honesty! So I... Honesty I... to the audience! So this, is, this, is the, this is why you listen to actual play and not, you know, like HBO miniseries, is because we admit when we make mistakes. Uh, we are human, too. <laughs> we are also human. I mean, Isaac except, could for, never. except for Cinder. Cinder's, <laughs> Cinder's eldritch, I think. Correct. <laughs> mm-hmm. So the rest of us are human, though, so at least you could take comfort in um, that small truth. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, four, now that I've done being fucking stupid. the cast. <laughs> oh shit um yeah uh anybody anybody have any good banter since we wasted like a whole like five minutes worth of good banter uh not not recording oh do you want another five minutes <laughs> just pretend that that was banter like real sped up he said uh, good banter cinder what <laughs> the oh, hell dude, you- you just don't understand. Uh, how about nerd Literally. Clusters, y'all? There's going to be two people we... that listen to this show that get that, and they're going to be like, then... that was some good banter. That was not good banter. Why are they both from Brooklyn? <laughs> that was some good banter. Was... I'll tell you what. Good. When their cinder just started spazzing off at the mouth, that was some good banter. <laughs> You know, it's actually been a hot minute since we've been in, like, the Western Wields dealing with the Fae, and so nobody in this part of the world has that Jersey accent, and I'll be honest, I kind of miss it. I do. Somebody just needs to cast Speak With Animals on some pigeon or something, and it'll... Hey, yo, I'm flapping here. Yeah, no, 100%. Ooh, ooh, we do need to know this side of the world's, like, nature accent. <laughs> I've got to figure it, that out. Oh, no. Same, uh, okay, you know? ask a mouse a question. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on well, it. genuinely, that may actually be a good strategy uh, for this uh, session because we collectively find ourselves in the royal fortress of the Lord Governor Hakoda Agra II. And in our last episode, we sort of ended in the middle of an interaction. You all were in the archives the gubernatorial archives and uh, we're having a, a, a conversation with grand matron riley trent wherein june figured out that at least allegedly her mother katarin had left the city on orders from the lord governor hakoda agra the second to investigate the origin of the desertification and the location of this elder god hank has no 
idea what the fuck that's about. He was completely surprised that Katarina. She lied? Uh, someone. So lied. out of character. Someone <laughs> lied. Wow. And uh, it very well might be her. Uh, but we shall see. And in the middle of that conversation, uh, Guard found a ceramic suit of armor that looked a lot like his sort of original pre uh, deathifying form. And Harissa found a tome that pointed the finger of, frankly, genocide, genocide. at the former commander of the Agra Wardens, Nasir Antony. Isaac's old boss. So y'all got a lot of information out of that conversation. And I think that what we are going to do next is we're actually going to jump. We're not going to pick back up in that room. And the four of you are walked together through this Byzantine fortress. And I think at this point, you're all starting to get a sense of kind of the layout of this building. You are kind of getting your head around the fact that it seems to be this kind of exterior ring with offshoots to sort of offices and you know the mess hall and uh, chambers and so forth and then there's an interior courtyard and a few big rooms kind of sprawling out in all directions all centered around this ring cool dark spaces dimly lit interiors in this sort of early twilight and you were led into a diplomat suite. And this diplomat suite uh, has four bedrooms, each with a plush down bed, probably the most comfortable thing that you all have seen since, realistically, the bathhouse. And they all sort of spoke off of a central common room. And that common room is filled with divans and pillows on the ground and ottomans and poofs and there's a big fruit bowl and uh, a coffee service and a little bit of a water feature that kind of bisects the room in the middle and it too is kind of dimly lit in this same way everything has this like kind of bluish green ambience to it this cirrolescence off of the very yellow sandstone and you are shown in and left alone for what might be the first time in months. And so I wanted to turn it over to the four of you to just fucking talk about everything that has happened up to this point, have an opportunity to share information and reflect and figure out where you want to go next. Isaac has already collapsed into a pile of pillows, and all you can see is his head. So we going to see some 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 moms, some mothers. That should be fun, right? You, neither of you looking at me when I said that joke. Okay, this is this is bad. June's gonna look over at Harissa. Safra is gonna look back at June and just. And knowing and exasperated. <sighs> I need to tell you guys something that's going to sound kind of odd. I had a conversation with Hank about Mama in Rally. And there seems to be this strange block in his memory. Or just lack of memory of Mama being in Rally. And I'm starting to notice a lot of these blanks in information regarding where Mama's been. Do you mean people didn't know where she was? Or it feels like something has confused people's memories? That's what I I thought. I thought it was confusion, but it's like there's a disconnect Like, Hank knows Mama went to Rally. Hank knows Mama was in Rally, but Mama having anything to do with Rally doesn't connect. I tried to knock some sense into him, but it just wasn't happening. But, like, I could almost see it happening. There's just, it's just not there. It's not in his brain. 
Perhaps you hit him too hard. I mean, maybe. <laughs> Perhaps. Um. Is it unusual to have blank spaces like that? It was similar, but also dissimilar to... Like, I forgot my mama, you know, had one eye and one arm. I was surprised by that when I really started thinking about it. Like, there were parts of my mother that I couldn't remember. But they reconnected with Hank. It's just not there. And then when we were in the library, I found a book about some, like, historical shit. Yuck. I found shit. a book in the library, too, actually. Ugh. Oh, really? And I'm going to pull out a book that I stole from the library. Ugh. The book that you pull out is very clearly marked Ledger of Returns. I forgot to tell you. He was very sneaky about it. Actually, I thought it was very good. He kind of just, wah, wah, and then it was gone. Great, now we get to read here, too. Isaac, like, snuckles in the pillows a little bit more, gets ready for a nap. <laughs> <laughs> just before we get to Guard's book, I just wanted to let you guys know that there's just, there's points in history, too, where there's these gaps. So, do you... Do you have any knowledge of what could have caused these gaps? Is it something that is magical or just gaps because someone forgot to write it? Or because they were sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know of any magical thing that would do that. I mean, I can sort of see connections between folks. What do you mean you can see connections it's almost like threads yeah it's like threads like a spider web or like ganbald's cloak yeah sorta some of them are reconnecting and some of them are just not there anymore there's like there's a a hole you think it's possible to cut some of these threads I mean, if I can see them, feel them, I don't see why somebody else who was more powerful than me could maybe manipulate them. That would certainly explain why things just seem not forgotten, but missing. If someone could get in and literally cut memories out of people. Yeah. What? But then that would be like some sort of mat. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get it. I'm starting to get it. Do you think Katarin cut memories out of Hank? Or do you believe that somebody else did? I don't know. Uh, I mean, it would make sense, right? That she would want to keep Hank safe. But I don't understand why it would be taken away completely... Was it the conversation I had with Trent that hmm. uh, the Elder God is eating away at the bonds? Yeah. Was that around everybody else? No. Oh, yeah. I just remembered. <laughs> <laughs> we could also say that, like, that was a thing, if, if you want to have already disclosed that, like, it's totally fine for you to have been like, hey, this was the topic of that conversation, like, immediately after having it. Trent was talking about, like, it might also have something to do with the Elder God that we're about to go see too. Something about eating the God was eating away at the bonds. I don't know if they're all done by the same thing or if it's if it's my mom or if it's somebody else. I imagine that if it's anything like Demoiselle, it is probably somewhat of a combination. She does not make things die, but she is a part of that process, and her rage affected that process. So what would be the motivation for the Elder God? I mean, that's the one that is turning things to sand. Why, why eat away at the bonds, too? What if it is not an intentional decision, but a side effect of something else 
Yeah, sim similar to our last lovely god. It was more out of her sorrows and rage that the things were happening around her. Possibly the same thing could be happening to this god. You know, last time we weren't prepared. But as you can see, um, I, I have a therapist as a father. So maybe if we take him with us, <laughs> then we could discuss this <laughs> with the god. You, nope, nope. My dad hates massive amounts of heat and sunlight. He likes his comfy spaces. That that won't work. We'll need another plan. <laughs> well, uh, Porky did say that the gods were enraged. This is obviously a symptom of this god being not quite in their own mind. Who knows why? But I think if we find Catherine, if we find your mother, June... We should start to find more of the answers and hopefully some ways of fixing it. If she'll even give us any answers. I don't know if you've noticed, but she doesn't seem very forthcoming. As you say, I don't know if she'll give us any answers. The camera deadpans to guard's book sitting on the table and just sit there for like 30 <laughs> seconds. Oh shit, I the book. <laughs> God, what are we supposed to do with this? It's just nonsense, probably. Mr. Spinks and I did an amazing job as secret investigators at the library, and this book proves that. To be honest, I had no idea what I was doing, and I panic-grabbed it. Uh, what? What is it? I have no idea. I can't read. <laughs> you can't read? No. <laughs> Oh shit! You no lucky idea. bastard! <laughs> oh god! There's always one in every campaign. Uh, <laughs> anyone who wants to investigate this book, please roll me an investigation check. As the two of them are looking at the book, I'm gonna turn to Isaac. How do we know that we aren't being affected by the bonds being discombobulated in the way that Hank is? How would you know if you were remembering something different? Hmm. That's a good point. Patrick, what did um, Isaac's mom make for breakfast? Oh, God. Isaac thinks back to, to, to breakfast that morning. Oh, you remember yeah, 100%. It? I mean, there's nothing to interfere with your memory of your mother's cooking. I think, God, that me and you, our minds are made of stronger stuff than some of these individuals in this room. <laughs> Isaac, I don't remember any moment from my life before I entered Rally other than in the briefest of glimpses. Yeah, but you you got all that guardian stuff. You know, you don't know if that's a god messing with it. Could have been the Ampersar, could have been you know, your guardian buddies watching your back and making sure you know, you were the chosen one of some crazy amazing Guard, please roll me an insight check, and can I get the result of that investigation check? It was a 15. Mine was a 16. And as you crack open this book, you find out that it is indeed the Ledger of Returns for that library. Uh, it is a long list of books that have been taken out, when they have been taken out, to whom they have been lent to, and then when they have been returned. I now really want that scrap of paper we found when we were doing the CSI thing. Is a hit list for people who have late fees. <laughs> that's a better plot actually yeah. um no. i knew it was the librarian the whole time on a 15 you trace all the way to the bottom the most recent being the most relevant and you see that uh the individual who has checked out a book the most recently is riley trent and she has checked out a book called historic trade routes of the northwest territories still on them she knows it's still out. She still has it? Uh, presumably. And if it would be anywhere, uh, it would probably be in the archives, which also seems to sort of double as her office. I really want to know why Trent has this book. Yes, maybe you're right. Maybe the first place to look is closer to her somewhere. I wonder if they'd have something in there about the sisterhood. Well, if you guys want to go steal books, I'm not going to tell you not to. I'm just going to stay out of it. What about the prisoner? I think me and God may have that under control. We are pretty intimidating. 
He's just sitting as a comfy <laughs> grandpa. Just. Well, let's see if uh, the information we find from Trent's, well, in Trent's study, matches what you managed to get out of the prisoners. I have a question uh, for you all. If you are planning on going in the earlier part of the night, the likelihood of you securing a long rest is probably pretty low. If you decide to go in the small hours of the morning, you can all get a long rest and still have plenty of time because it's still pretty early in the evening. I'm curious as to which direction you all want to lean there. We want to get, me and Guard want to get there before Hank gets there. I am ready if you are. All right, ladies, Mr. Sphinx, we are going to go talk to some people. (laughs) God, laugh with me. Ha! (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Stupid. Um, Uh, um, All right. Uh, I think, June, we should probably wait a bit later when everyone is truly asleep. I don't want her coming back down, forgetting she's left her knitting or something. (laughs) Isaac and Guard. What are you doing to prepare yourselves for this excursion? Have you interrogated many prisoners before? Oh, yes. Are there any tools we need? Well, usually it's just my charm and wit that gets the job done. But individuals like Hank usually need, you know, rope, maybe some water, little intricate tools like to pull out teeth and or flay skin. I don't know if I need any tools to do either of those things. That is horrifying to think about. Do you think we need to pull anyone's teeth out or flay anyone's skin? No, I would do that to myself if I actually had to go searching for a book. (laughs) But for our situation, we should be fine. Okay. The two of you make your way out of your chambers and immediately outside of your chambers you find yourself in uh an antechamber you find yourself in sort of a little open room and uh there are hallways off of this room uh that go left and right uh in this ring that is the sort of exterior of the the fortress so if you were to go left you go clockwise if you were to go right you go counterclockwise around the building Uh, and also straight ahead uh, there's a, a hallway that leads directly through. And at the center of this antechamber, there is a fountain, a little dry fountain that is, uh, you know, kind of this abstract geometrical structure. Uh, and kind of around it, there are the trappings of uh, some tools and, uh, you know, a ladder to get up to the top because it looks like the fountain, which doesn't seem to be pouring out any water at all, moving any water at all, is is leaking, drip, 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 in a way that it's not supposed to be. So it looks like somebody uh, was working on repairs, has left it for the evening, and that's what you see. What does this fountain look like? I'm sorry, one more time. It's just kind of an abstract geometrical shape, right? Like it's uh, it's it's just kind of an abstract, uh, you know, kind of polygonal structure. The uh, elbows guard. Hey, look, your cousin. And keeps walking. That was rude. That was a rude joke. I'm sorry. That just I don't I'm, get it. I'm trying to do a banter thing and then I forget that you We can do a banter thing. Okay. Alright. I'm gonna say a phrase or a word and then mm. you you just, you know, banter back and say something interesting and humorous to me. And that's how we, we build this repertoire. Does that make I'm sense? I'm ready. Okay. All right. He looks around the room. He looks at a, a, a suit of armor or something sitting there. Look, is that your brother? No. I really had a lot of hope in that one, God. I'm not going to lie to you. I was, I, was I, I thought we had a breakthrough, but let, let's just go do this. <laughs> Interrogation. Isaac is heartbroken right now. <laughs> as 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 Isaac like walks away, there's a there is a pause where guard kind of like looks at the suit of armor and then looks at Isaac. Doesn't really understand what went wrong and then sort of scurries after him. <laughs> so we are doing something that we've never done before uh, in unbalanced encounters. 
I genuinely, I swear to God, I have a map up in front of me. You are trying to get to a very specific room that is not well advertised. You don't know where you're going, and we are going to take it uh, on that on that basis. So again, your options are clockwise around the outside, counterclockwise around the outside, or straight through. Um, DM, mm-hmm. can I troll you real quick? Sure. Yeah, troll him. Can I think back to this individual and what they were wearing? Uh, you're, you're thinking about the, uh, the, the woman that you cleaved off the elephant? Yes. Yeah. They were wearing largely sort of silk embroidered robes. Uh, they definitely seemed to be of northern desert extraction. I want to think to their robes, and then I want to think of I want to think of Reezy and how focused he was on trying to find the man with no boots. And I will cast locate object, and kind of like a the, the the hound dog in in me as a warden just kind of focuses in. Isaac, you dwell on Reezy's commitment to his guiding, and you feel a subtle. The direction that it leads you is, well, down at least a little ways. I knew it. Uh, But also through the hallway that leads directly out in front of you. You both make your way into this hallway, and it is maybe 30 feet long, dark at this point, and open at one end that leads you to an exterior courtyard. And this courtyard, which you believe to be at the center of this fortress, features a small little oasis pool and palms and ferns. Monstera vines creep up the sides of the walls and dig into its sandstone. And it would be a beautiful, peaceful, moonlit moment if it weren't for the fact that four aggro wardens are lounging around this oasis. I am going to give you the benefit of a snap stealth check if that is something that you are interested in doing. Or you can face it head on. Are we allowed to be here? I mean, I wouldn't say Hank gave us the run of the place, but I don't know why they would stop us. Unless they have something to hide from us. I mean, we'll, I'll, I'll do the stealth check. You want to do the stealth check? We're going to call this a group stealth check. One of you needs to hit at least a 15 in order to not immediately be seen. One was a 15. The other was an 11. And that's on plate. I got a 23. Legitimately stealth is my second best skill. Guard, you perceive a little bit of laughter come from this courtyard. You just <laughs> throw your hand out and stop Isaac tucked back into a shadow before you're noticed. Uh, both of you can roll me an investigation check if you'd like. 12. Dude, we are not, this is this is not the job for We, we, we are, are not, not the guy. The we are one. not the guy. I thought we were talking to people. <laughs> we are not the guy. Uh, nine. <laughs> All right, that's a 12. Uh, breaks a 10 on this group check. Uh, they are doing their best to blow off a little steam and you overhear bits and pieces you overhear some japes about taking off for the southern front that are clearly covering deep anxieties about that fact and you hear mention of a rumor that there is a large traitor organization within the ranks of the southern border and they jostle each other back and forth indicating that it's just a rumor you know that kind of thing does it matter if they see us would they try to stop us probably not but then that information would go to hank wait the hell do we care if hank knows that we went to go talk to a prisoner all right let's just go and walk up to him sounds good Okay, give me one second. I gotta write something down. What is your passive perceptions for the both of you? Passive perception, 10. Okay. 14. Just. We, the audience, see 
just the faintest pulse in kind of the lights in this room that both of you miss as you walk up to this group. Uh, and pretty quickly, you identify a friendly face. Uh, you see that kind of tucked behind one of the palms uh, is Alistair Wayne. Ian and gentlemen. How's it going, fellas? The uh, Lord Governor's got you doing some uh, nightly patrols. <laughs> well, uh, I'm about to go on patrol for the evening. Uh, these gentlemen here are on leave just before they are about to be deployed. And we were simply having a bit of banter. You know how it goes. We were bantering earlier. Yes. <laughs> yes, we were. Sounds like there's a lot maybe to unpack there that totally uh, reasonable. I, I I don't want to intrude, but is there anything I can do for you gentlemen? Uh, no, we were just on our way to go um, have gained some information before we go on our journeys. Just strolling in that direction. Gain uh, some information? Yes, the little governor wanted us to uh, talk to some of the people that might have something to do with that. I, I see. Uh, well, I certainly would not know much about what resources you have available to you, but um, he sort of takes a step up to you, Isaac, and he says, um, presumably the Lord Governor has taken you into his confidence, Mr. Ackstrom. Would, would you say that's accurate? I would say as much, seeing as how our first encounter was him literally telling me that, yes. Well, that sure would indicate that fact. Between that and the fact that you are and have been for my whole life a bit of a folk hero, I am inclined to do the same. I would not, and he here really lowers his voice, I would not, if I were you, Speak so freely of your plans in this building. Not everyone is so predisposed to allegiance with our cause. That is a good point. Well, gentlemen, I believe me and my associate have thought of other plans this evening and may go out about things in a different direction how much closer would you say we have gotten to that hallway probably 20 feet away from the entrance now i would just i just want to act as if i'm going in a different direction and then once i like there's a pillar or something that cuts my eyesight from them I would like to try and misty step and head down that hallway. Like you're just leaving guard? I'll kill them all. Okay. Uh, the no, no guard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, gentlemen, I hope you um, enjoy the rest of your leave. I don't know why you would spend it here where you work. That is, I mean, you you two don't seem that bright when it comes to that. But um, Alistar, I hope to see you again in, in less trying times. Understood. Mr. Axtrummer, and if I could be of assistance to you in any way, you please do not hesitate to reach out. You have a good and safe night, sir. You as well. Uh, and then as we're walking away in low whispers, all right, God, everything, yes. everything I just said to them, that is mm. called me lying in, uh, what we're go actually going to do is go exactly in the direction we were planning on going. All right, let's turn around. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> we have to find a stealthier way of doing such things. Now, me, I'm not very stealthy, but you are. So I'm going to leave that option for you to figure it out. So in, in a moment, uh, I am no longer going to be here standing talking to you. And then I need you to figure out how to meet me towards that hall we were planning on going. Does that make any sense to you? Yes. Outstanding. All right, ready? Three, two, one. And just Isaac disappears from your sight. Isaac, you vanish and reappear in the hallway just out of sight. And guard, you are left alone uh, behind a pillar that is maybe just blocking your line of sight. I'm going to climb the pillar. 
This became a Zelda temple way too quickly. Uh, <laughs> you did this. I know. Your nat one roll. Yeah, I did. Um, yeah, you have the cricket kickers. You just... I quietly... I skitter. <laughs> okay, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll accept that as disquieting as it is. Uh, you are kind of up at the top of this pillar. What do you do? How far away is the next... Is Are there any either large objects or walls or other pillars or columns... There are there are some pillars that are identical to this one every so many feet kind of encircling this uh this inner courtyard. I mean, we're just going to play Zelda for a minute, I guess. I am going to do the the level or Crash Bandicoot more. Uh I'm going to try to just hop from pillar to pillar at the top of the pillars. I actually have something a mechanic uh, written down for a related thing here, but I think uh this is either going assuming you don't want to be seen. Mm-hmm. This is either going to be a DC 25 athletics check. Mhm. Or a DC 15 stealth check. Either way, you're going to be able to get there. It's just how effortlessly you sort of do it, how stealthily you do it. Let's let's do this. Let's try to do the stealth check. I'm going to be a let's sneaky man. Let's do it. That's a 24. All right. You launch off of this pillar and land on the next one and can slide down and quietly take one step into the hallway. And just kind of skirt past everybody. Yep. Do I see Isaac in the hallway? Yeah, he's right there. He's waiting for you. Oh. Just kidding. And with that, we are going to jump back to the chambers. June and Harissa, I assume that you have, for the most part, retired for the evening. You're trying to get that long rest in. June... You are troubled with fitful slumber. And we see you in a dream. You are standing on a sand dune. And the wind... (sighs) Kicks up swirls perfect glittering white sand and some of it kind of whips past you gets you on the shoulder you flinch back a little bit you kind of look in that direction and you see some pillars jutting out from the sand ancient decrepit concrete yellowed with time chipped and fractured but they seem to form an entrance into something beneath the dunes I go check it out you run through the sand and you have that very distinct feeling of trying to run in a dream where your legs just don't work right like you are just dragging yourself forward through this sand But you get there eventually, and you sort of put your hand up on the wall, and it is cold to the touch where it's been shaded from the sun. And you notice a pattern. It's not quite the filigree that adorns guard and the geckos, but it is really reminiscent of that. You can't see down the stairs, but you are welcome to try them. Put one tentative foot on the first step. It holds. The further you get into the darkness, the more absolute it becomes. But as is wont to happen in dreams, it is a strange and befuddling darkness where you cannot see your hands in front of your face, but the walls seem to be visible. And that filigree, those carvings carry on throughout the whole interior and you swear that every now and then you can see a little glimmer of purple or gold chase its way through the trenches carved into the stone can i touch the wall you kind of go up to the wall and you run your finger along one of the little ridges and you hear And the rush of sand as the floor 
bottoms out beneath you and you are sucked into a whirlpool of shifting sands driving further and further down and I need you to please make me a death saving throw excuse me what straight to death oh uh, uh, oh my god I've never rolled a death saving throw that's a four a four is a failure dies in her sleep though <laughs> You feel absolute blackness closing in around you. June, I'd like you to make me another death save, please. That was almost a nat one, but it's a 15. Ooh, okay. okay, you've got one failure. Don't you dare say and one success. Oh, God. June, you hear... June, darling, give me a hand. Dom. Oh. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> Please roll me another to save. Thirteen. It's two successes. <gasps> it was almost another one. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Juniper, give me your hand. I'll reach out my hand. Your arm doesn't move. Fuck. <laughs> well, it's one of those dreams. Gross. I hate those dreams. June, as the edges of your fleeting consciousness begin to fray and dissolve, you distantly perceive a web of blue shimmering light wrap around your hand. And all of a sudden, you are wrenched from the sands. And it takes a moment for you to sort of properly regain your bearing. But as you blink and drive the grit from your eyes, you see a figure that is sort of hunched and curled almost into themselves just slightly over you, and they're shaking. Uh, I go over to it. Are, are you okay? A single brilliant green eye meets yours in the darkness and your mother with her one good arm wrapped around herself says i need you to find me sweetheart i don't know if i can hold out much longer i go to wrap my arms around her and that is when you wake up Oh, hello there, and welcome to the mid-roll. It's me, Cinder, and this is some time-sensitive business. On July 29th, our friends over at Orlando DSA will be streaming on Twitch from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, playing some good old-fashioned D&D. They will be raising funds for the UPS strike workers by funding food on the picket lines, lawn signs, and any direct emergency funds. If you need more incentive, they have the usual milestones of eating spicy things, removing hair, and there may be some milestones that affect the games. You can help out by going to twitch.tv slash Orlando DSA and follow so you know when they go live. However much you can donate is greatly appreciated, and tell them Guard sent you. Speaking of other upcoming events, we, the cast of Unbalanced Encounters, are doing a live Q&A next Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is July 29th, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. There is a submission link in our Discord if you want to submit questions for us to answer on stream if you can't make it live. We'll be doing it over on our YouTube channel. Speaking of things over on our YouTube channel, you can now find the first episode of Blight at the museum, the horror little mini-arc that I ran it is up it's live and it's oh it's spooky and guess what all three episodes are up live on the patreon and if you're thinking to yourself hmm how do i know if i want to do this sort of patreon well guess what friends patreon now offers a free trial so if you want to listen to all three episodes of blight at the museum right now you can go over to our patreon 
become a member with a free trial, binge all three episodes, and then bounce on out of there. Or if you decide you want to stick around and continue to support the show, that's, you know, uh, we're okay with that. We also have a new episode of Random Encounters featuring Nick Plaisance going live on August 3rd. This is where our dear Emily Graymore and our wonderful Tyler Clausen interview creators out in the world and meet the characters that they play. Oh boy, a lot of stuff. It's exciting. I really hope that we can catch you at some of these events. Go check out Blight at the Museum, and uh, let's get back to the show. June. You catch your breath as you bolt awake. And you are in this plush, well-appointed, peaceful room. There's a very faint kind of green-blue light, even dimmer than before, just allowing you to sort of make out the outlines of the shapes in the middle distance. Comb my hands through my hair and try to shake off the dream and get a glass of water and try to assess what time it is. You're really not sure. The consequence of the structure of this building is that there aren't a lot of exterior windows. You know, there's a skylight in the sort of central common room, but... Other than that, you have no good way of telling time. Um, I'll go out into the common room. You step outside, and Isaac and Guard are not back yet. So you assume that it's late, but not maybe 6 a.m. late. And you kind of look up, and you see just constellations and galaxies. Not a cloud overhead. She'll go over to Arissa's room, lightly tap on the door. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Um, who? Is it time? One, one second, please. <laughs> and Arissa's going to op- uh, open the door, and her hair is just going to be like bird's nest. <laughs> like everything about her looks and screams... I've been asleep for about 10 years or need another 10 years of sleep still. Uh, can I can I come in? Oh, yes, please. Uh, I'll go sit on her bed. <laughs> That's like it. <laughs> Sphinx is still like on his back, sort of. <laughs> you know how dogs dream and they kind of kick oh, yeah. their leg a little bit? That's, that's definitely what. <laughs> I had a horrible dream my mother ask saying that she doesn't she needs our help do you remember any specifics uh where you were or Uh, smells or sounds or anything like this there were pillars and a tunnel doors and i touched the wall and i fell into darkness and sand i felt like i was dying Wait, you touched a wall? Was there anything on these walls when you touched them? They were like symbols that kind of look like guard, but not... I want to... I don't know if this is reaching, uh, but do I need to do any check, basically, is what I'm checking for this. But um, I, I want to draw what I remember from when Safra was a girl and see if that matches what... June remembers, and I, I'm just wondering if I need to roll anything for that. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and give me a uh, survival check? We'll say that this is kind of bound up in your sort of folkloric storytelling interpretation here. 21. Hey. I mean, it's not photo accurate, but it's about as good as you can get in like a minute and a half pencil sketch. And do they match? Does it look like what I saw? June yours was in a dream right and so it's it's one of those things where you look at it and your initial impulse is that's it exactly and then you dwell on it for a minute and there's a little bit of distance there where you're not 100 percent sure whether that's it exactly or you're just sort of imposing it onto the dream but there are there are details that seem very similar 
the structures are the same. The filigree is very close. Maybe the angles feel a little off. The depths and distances don't seem quite right, but it's very close. Mm. Yeah, they maybe a little similar. What what is this? Tell me everything you remember about the look of this place, the outside. Where was it? Was it surrounded by trees or was it surrounded by bushes, rocks? No. It's just, it was desert here. Let me, can I see that pencil? Yeah. Got? And she'll, from, just do her best to draw two old pillars and the door. It, there was just sand dunes. White sand everywhere. June, if your mother was trying to give you a message, I think I know where she is. Really? I've been here. If this is where I think it is, I have been here. Where where is it? Are there any maps nearby? (laughs) Archives. Okay. (laughs) Let's find a map. I think I should probably let Spink sleep, but I think if we head down to the archives, I could probably find more information as the exact location of this. I'm sure she has some maps or something. Okay. Yeah. And also, we might be able to find out more things before we head on over there unknowing what is awaiting us. Alright, sounds... sounds good. Are you ready? Uh, yeah, just one second, and she'll pull her bandana on. Yeah, I'm ready. And with that, I think Safra's just going to, like, scrunch her hair up into a big, messy ponytail. Right, let's go. Okay, then I need a group stealth check. Can I do pass without a trace, yes, please? Yes, you can. So, that's a 28 for me. And an 18 from me. So. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you almost didn't make the DC here. Uh, oh, Jesus. Yeah, I didn't roll well. So I'm glad I did pass without a trace, boys and girls. Uh, you both shimmer slightly with the surrounding fog of misdirection from her says pass without a trace, and you get out into this antechamber, see the same fountain in need of repairs. Remember the path that you took to get here, take a right, head counterclockwise around the building. Make your way to the elevator. Stand for a few moments, sorting out the panel of entry, and eventually click it into place. The elevator opens, and the two of you... Not another elevator. Cram in. Right. (laughs) And begin to slip down. I love all these magical elevators in D&D games. They are the most important technology. (laughs) <laughs> just <laughs> What's a good we are going to jump to isaac and guard uh the two of you continue down this hallway following isaac's intuition and come to another little antechamber with a very similar fountain this one seems to be in good repair no water no drip Then you move through, past it, still being drawn in by the heartbeat of Isaac's magic. And you see a door, a heavy iron door that is flanked on either side by two big water wheels. Water wheels? Mm Mm-hmm. All right, I'm just going to walk over to one of the water wheels and shake it. Do a little, see what happens. Uh, I need an athletics check, if you'd be so kind. 14. It's a pretty bad roll for me. You try to move one, and it doesn't budge at all. You go over to the other one, and it doesn't budge at all. But in both cases, you kind of see that the other one, like, jukes I was about to say, can I assist and do the same thing at the same time i'm gonna make guards 14 athletics check ride here but you can also give me an athletics check Uh, 20 okay that is a little bit better and the both of you sort of heave these water wheels you see that as you sort of pull them forward the door 
creaks up a quarter inch and then even on a 20 slams back down uh you imagine that you would need a team of oxen in both cases to get these wheels to move is there water coming out there's no water currently no is there a place like for it to be coming out are there like slots or gutters uh the the way that these wheels are sort of half embedded into the wall uh there's space potentially like above them there's like fly space in the wall that water could potentially come out of but you can't like reach in there right it's like kind of up and back and you said the fountain as well was empty yeah both of the ones you've seen so far uh the god can you give me a boost and try and look is this for where the ladder was there was like it was up at the top of the fountain correct it was resting yeah it looked like somebody had used it to climb to the top of the fountain yeah oh shit why am i climbing no hey god can you uh go up there and see if you see i mean these fountains are like seven feet tall it's not it's not like you've got to like hop yeah i mean yeah guards like 10 feet tall what do you see bud <laughs> you want to run me an investigation check uh sure I get, I'm, I'm good at perception, but I don't know if that's relevant. Uh, you here. could also potentially roll me perception. It'll be different kinds of information. All right, let's go for that. Okay. 13. When you look at the top of the fountain, it seems to be two distinct parts. And you're kind of looking around. You're trying to make sense of this thing. You're trying to figure out, like, what is the mechanism here? And you see that there are two holes on either side of the top part. And those holes don't seem to go all the way through. They're almost like grooves. How big are they? Probably two inches in diameter. Yeah. Perfect. Isaac, Hmm. get one of your weapons. Go stand on the other side of this. Right here? Jam the handle in that hole right there. I'm taking my axe. I jam my my handle in the hole. Let's try to turn this like a big gear. Hmm, I see what you're saying. Uh, Like a millstone. As guards standing right now doing this, Isaac is not seven feet, so he is definitely swinging his little his legs. Yeah, just give it. I'm just trying to get some turbulence going, <laughs> and I'm gonna try to push it like I'm grinding a millstone. Okay, uh, I am curious as to whether or not you're trying to do this um, surreptitiously. If you're trying to be quiet while you're doing this, or if you're just gunning for it. I think I think Isaac. Once he starts hearing the, I think God. Sh- 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 I will say that Guard doesn't even know if this will do anything. So his initial thought is, will this do anything? Way more than, will this do anything quietly? Guard, I am going to ask you to make me an athletics check, please. 17. Neither of you see the little flash of light. 17. You hear... It does something? As you turn the head of this thing and align it and you see water start to pour out guard like an excited dog is like looking back and forth between that and isaac god you are a wizard (laughs) i would have never thought of that okay is the Uh, door open can i get it the door is not open the water (laughs) is i know the door's not the water is not flowing over these wheels can i get perception checks i know the door absolutely i I know the door is not open (laughs) Two. Cool. Oh my god, come on. Please are all good. 19! Guard, on a 19, you hear from the other side of the door hushed and concerned murmurings. Isaac. Hmm? I hear murmuring behind the door that sounds concerned. Well, that sucks. If it's concerned, then there must be something wrong with and or the prisoner escaped or prisoners did or they don't want us to keep doing whatever this is well at this point fuck them we gotta get this door open we have water now yes in this fountain any points to the wheels but we need it over there do you have a bucket let me just check my things and he goes in his bag he knows he doesn't have a bucket but he's just yeah just give me a second Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. nope nope uh, that, that's not gonna work. I have a shield. Do we need to go to the other fountain? 
we could go all the way back. Hopefully those gods are no longer there. And then turn that one. And then possibly all the water in the entire area will start going. And then hopefully the door will open. Is there perhaps something more insidious in this room that we are not noticing? A key, perhaps? I punched the fountain. Go ahead, roll me an attack. 23. Uh, a 23, I mean, you hit this thing fucking hard, and there's like a little burp of air that, like, the water is interrupted briefly, uh, and that causes the sort of drain to, like, <laughs> like, there's like a force of water that pushes through, and you see out of the left, wheel just a little splash of water so it is the fountains son of a bitch do we have to go all the way back we we'll go all the way back now. before we got to the courtyard it was just a straight shot correct you basically bisected the circumference of this place you basically mm -hmm. just went straight right. across um by the way locate object only lasts 10 minutes so i'm, I'm assuming i mean you if we you, do that it would does locate fun. object give you the distance if it, as long as it's in a thousand feet sure. i know where i know where it is you just know where it is yeah you, me, you it's behind this door and down so should we go fuck with the other wheel yeah let's go fuck with the other wheel uh are you guys cutting back across the courtyard or are you taking the outside counterclockwise okay uh counterclockwise you don't meet anyone as you traverse this exterior hallway you see that there are several locked doors potentially more chambers, offices, you're not 100% sure what. You actually do see the entrance to the training arena uh, where we saw Harissa fight her older brother in our last session. And you continue to circle around uh, until you reach another antechamber with a fountain. Um, And those tools. Nope, that not that saw. one. Not that one? It's a different one? Mm-hmm. And as you reach this antechamber, it sort of settles in that there's probably four of these. One at each Son of the cardinal of directions. Botch. All right. Same plan. Same plan. I take my axe, I jam it into the side, and I start... Guard, are you trying to be stealthy here? Uh, again, the options are either a group stealth check or a, a, one of you can roll an athletics check. Guard? No, guard is not... Listen. No. Okay. At this point, guard, I think you do notice that when you click these into place, the ambient light of this room seems to react in a strange way. Something magical is happening when we click these. Either we're triggering some sort of trap or something is watching us or being made aware of what we're doing. Hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to prevent that, though. Well, at this point, we're caught. So, we might as well get what we need, get the hell out of here. Uh, are the two of you picking up the pace as a consequence? Probably. Yeah. We are going to go ahead and say that you whip through the rest of these. You make it back to the antechamber in front of your chambers. Uh, turn that fountain and easily get the water flowing. DM question. Yeah. If I smash one of these pots, do I get any gems or uh, <laughs> anything? Adam? Only one way to find out, baby. Uh, <laughs> Isaac just starts smashing pots. <laughs> yeah, that's going to help your stealth. That's going to help your stealth quite a bit. Um, you make it to the far north and perform this ritual one more time. And when you do that, you hear the door begin to rise as water flows out in torrents over these water wheels. With that, we're going to jump back to Harissa and June a little later in our evening. Oh, thank God we don't have to, like, try to figure out how to go through a door. Don't, because he's going to fucking make us have some kind of bullshit puzzle. Uh, you both are in the archives? <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. One of you can give me a perception check, and one of you can give me an investigation check. I'm going to do perception, see how I do. Okay. And then if I need to use my inspiration, I will use my inspiration. Sam, table talk. What's your, what's your bonus to... 
investigation? Uh, it's only a plus two. My oh. perception is a plus three. Okay, do perception then, because I've got a plus three in investigation. So okay. hopefully between okay. the two of us, we'll get there. Yes. Right. Okay. okay. <laughs> oh, my oh, God. Jeez. Oh, I got a 22. June, on a 13 perception, uh, you notice as you're sort of browsing around these shelves, uh, a weird hole in the wall. Harissa, you beeline for Trent's desk. And you find, first and foremost, a book that looks like a notebook, perhaps a diary of some kind, judging by the latch. You also see, uh, sitting immediately underneath that diary, a letter, which we can get into momentarily. You're, you're going to get a fair amount here. Yay! I'm sharing all of this with June. As you sort of turn to hand June these materials, you kind of look over her shoulder to the, you know, kind of shelves immediately behind her, and you see that there is another book that has been sort of pulled out and is resting uh, on that shelf and you kind of pick it up and it is a book that bears a title in old imperial the title of this book is de habitu deorum which means well do you speak old imperial hang on i do Check. oh amazing there you go. it's the uh... only thing i speak <laughs> uh, June, uh, De Habitu Deorum takes you a second to sort of suss the declensions of. It's been a long time since your mom has grilled you on Old Imperial. On the habits of gods. Harissa, uh, as you sort of hand this book over to June, she's translating the title. Uh, you glance down at this letter, and it is a quick little missive that says in just a few words that its author has been asked by the Lord Governor to investigate the existence of a possible elder god in the northern deserts and has been asked to do so in connection with the creeping desertification. Signed, Katarin. Oh, so this is the fake... Wait, is this the excuse she gave to, like, scoot the poodle on out? It is, mm. but between the two of you, because that 22 was so good, Yay. you recognize a few additional things. There are a couple of turns of phrase in this that feel off. She says things like, happily obliged to follow orders, in a way that maybe doesn't quite sound like her. This is code, isn't it? Is this some kind of sapphire sister code? Are there some words that are capitalized? June. You kind of screw up your face as you're looking at this thing. There are a lot of things about your mother that you're having a hard time remembering if those memories were correct or not. But for whatever reason, her handwriting stands off the page. And you remember the letter that you have kept with you since you found it. The one left for your father. June, this isn't her handwriting. I have that letter. Keep it with me. I pull it out, show her. The L's are wrong. The S's are wrong. The slant is wrong. It's it's fucking close, though. It's good. So you guys have a fair amount of information. You have this book that you could potentially dig into. You have this diary that is locked uh, and uh, unopened. You have this letter and you have a hole in the wall. Harissa, you want to go take a look at the hole in the wall? Damn right I do. What kind of an adventurer would I be if I didn't look in a hole in a wall? The holes continue at regular intervals. Oh, the holes are? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was just like a gaping hole in the wall. Get uh, get puzzled. They are approximately approximately an inch in diameter and are at regular intervals aligning with the aisles. I don't like this. This this smells like Indiana Jones trap to me. I don't like Ah. it. (laughs) <laughs> Don't touch anything. Ah. <laughs> so there's multiple holes in the wall. Can I look at the other the other wall? Are there more holes on the other side? Yep. I 
I'm worried some arrows are going to start shooting out. <laughs> right. June, I need you to make me a constitution saving throw, please. Oh, no. That's a 16. You <laughs> matrix out of the way <laughs> as a dart I knew it. whizzes past you into its opposite hole and it's gone. Oh boy. Huh. We, we triggered, we must have triggered something. Did I catch a glimpse of this dart in any way? Or was it too quick? Why? What are you looking for? I want to know if it's the same kind of darts that were shot at us in the, in the town. You're not sure. Because that's why I want to try and catch one, you know. Uh, you do, in fact, have someone in this group that has a catch projectiles feature gained at third level. <gasps> Sam! All right, how do we... Do you right, think we just ready? set it off? Set it off when we move in front of it. <laughs> set it off on purpose. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop my hand up really quick and like not, you know, if the hole is here <laughs> and I am here, I'm not gonna like pop my hand up, but I'm gonna stand back a little bit and like wave my hand. Doesn't quite seem to do it. You seem to be moving a little too quick. Uh, pe- hey, uh, Harissa, pass me that, um, book, well, oh, you already passed me the book on Habits of the Old Gods, and I'm gonna hold the book between two, like, in between the two walls. Doesn't set anything off. Okay. All right. All right. I'm gonna, mm, I'm gonna stand. I position myself, and I don't want to stand, like, front to back to the holes. I want to angle my body. So I'm trying to hear, see if I hear any. F- uh, go ahead and roll me your deflect missiles. That's a 15. June, you still yourself in this space and listen. And in your mind's eye, you see A wisp of bond tethering you to each wall. And in that moment, something clicks. And for a fraction of a second, you glance up and see wisps of bond tethering you and Harissa to the ceiling of the building itself, those green blue lights and then you grab one of the darts tumble out of the way oh uh here you go (laughs) and i'll hand it to harissa honestly i think this is pretty damning knowing trade routes from where we were coming from having the same implements used to try and put us down I mean it's either her or uh, maybe this is a common tool common weapon by the sisterhood either way it proves we can't really trust the sisterhood right now June has darts yeah absolutely these were just darts that she got from they would have come from presumably your mother (gasps) do they look the same I pull one out yeah. Uh. Alright. Marissa, let's see if we can find a book on the sisterhood while we're here. Definitely worth a look. Uh, while June is looking for that, I want to have a look through the diary journal thing that was on her desk. Oh, it's locked. Can I break it? You could try. A magical lock? You could try to break it. Oh, wait. Do I have... I have cooking utensils. <laughs> could you Give use... me that ladle. <laughs> if I have like a fork or something, I wonder if you could use it to like. Um, yeah. I I will I will give you cook it up. Uh, Dex, D twenty plus Dex, to open this thing. Uh, and eleven. Oh. 
you wrestle with this thing for a second and you Bloody feel a little look. you've got like a hairpin in there probably maybe june's fork right um <laughs> 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 and it's a it's a crab fork. It's real tiny. You you, you you're kind of in there with this little fucking seafood fork that Jude has. <laughs> I thought Jude was vegan. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> uh, little seafood fork kind of in this thing, um, and you feel a little click, and then poof, the fork just gets jettisoned out of the lock. I'm gonna look for a book on the sisterhood if that's all right. Could I do a survival check to try and sort of go around the room and hide our presence? You also still have passed with a trace up. So like I'm I'm giving you a lot of leeway here on whether or not you're going to be found. The only the big thing is going to be what you choose to remove. Right. That's what I'm saying. Just to kind of make it less obvious, at least for a little while longer to give us a head start. You know what I mean? June, I would like you to please make me one more constitution saving throw. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> that was a three. Oof. Uh, June, Oof. you glance around, you're kind of combing through, you're being very cautious, right? Like you're staying low, you're trying to stay out of it, you kind of glance around, you know, you're, you're combing through these these uh, these shelves. And at one point, you know, you're kind of four shelves deep into this thing, and Harissa's kind of, you hear Harissa off in the background, like sweeping off all of the footprints off of things, and you glance up, and you see something that says sisterhood, and you stand up to grab it, and the dart hits you and you boom, fall to the ground. Harissa, I will allow you. What, what was your survival roll, by the way? 27. Yeah, I will allow you to <laughs> sweep this place clean to the two of you and get June Fingerprints gone. out of there. <laughs> we were, we were never there. <laughs> but I do want to uh, maybe jump ahead a little bit and see whether or not June wanted to kind of immediately dig into this book because... That's obviously super valuable information. So a little bit of a lore dumpy moment, but uh, do you, June, when you're kind of resuscitated in, in the common room with Harissa, do you want to take a look at this book? Yes. Cool. So this is the rest of what you got on that incredible uh, 22 investigation check. Uh, June, this book is like it's time consuming to translate, right? Like it is written both, di you know, kind of in a, in a dialect that you're not super familiar with and you know kind of with a pacing and a cadence that is just dry right like it is a textbook written in a dead language that you don't speak but you can kind of read you eventually find a word that is relevant desertus and you start to work outward from that and you find your mark the cleanser also sometimes known as the great lizard is a force of desolation locked into a tidal orbit with the green. And I think both of you were aware of the passing mentions that we had for Pandar the Green, the sort of last temple oh. where Isaac's dad works. Right, right, right. The job of the cleanser is to cleanse the land for repopulation. And it is all part of a living, breathing, balanced cycle. The green grows to the point where growth is no longer sustainable if left unchecked and is contained and hemmed in by the acts of the cleanser. The green breathes in life and the cleanser breathes out perfect clean white sand so it's almost like referring to the green and the desolation as a sort of like a like a wildfire makes way for more growth but now there's no growth but the fire, forest fires keep happening type deal you do not get a location but what you do get is an interesting piece of information the cleanser as the authors of this book found has a specific and idiosyncratic aversion to rosemary. To rosemary? That's what it says. Interesting. An aversion Why? to rosemary. And you have that reaction, and you continue reading. Hmm. The old empire 
took it upon themselves to magically cultivate rosemary in and around each of their outposts in the plains and deserts of the north. And you see some runes that are kind of scrawled onto the page, and then you turn the page to a full illustration of the pillars from your dream. Holy shit. And underneath it says Imperial Outpost. Looks like we know where we're going. Yeah, it does. And with that, we jump back to Isaac and Gart. The two of you quickly lock this thing into place. Water falls from its spout into the basin and is whisked away. You hear the slow but becoming increasingly steady turn of the water wheels and the sound of iron raising, and you rush back to see that no one is there. Knew it. Knew it. The stairs lead down. You could both make me perception checks, if you'd be so kind. 18. Great. 21. Oh, I'm on fire. Amazing. Isaac, you here. <laughs> Emanate from down below. Guard, you hear the same thing. And also, fucking shut her up. Hurry up. We don't know how long they're going to take. Let's go. Dashing. I'm the fastest man alive. 40 foot movement speed. And I need the two of you to roll me initiative. Isaac, uh, you have a four. Mm-hmm. Guard is a 20. That's very good. Guard, you are first in the initiative order. What do you do? I run. I run in towards the noise. You barrel down these stairs. How close can I get with 40 feet of movement? Uh, you can get to the foot of the stairs, which is not necessarily going to be within reach of them, but I am going to describe what you see. Please. You see cells and racks flat beds with iron manacles chains hanging from the ceiling at unpleasant looking angles collections of ledgers on low shelves behind locked doors that lend an eerie pro forma business like attitude to this place And you see two men in Agra guard outfits, each standing over your two prisoners. Uh, The one armed woman has been gagged and uh, she has a blade at her throat. Mm -hmm. And the man who tried to kill himself with cyanide is being smothered by one of these two guards. Uh, You are 20 with 40 feet of movement. You're at the foot of the stairs. You're 20 feet away from the nearest of the two, which is going to be uh, the one-armed woman. Uh, I'm going to call out to the two guys that are starting to torture them or or whatever. I think I'm just going to say, stop. Bonus action. A little bit of a glow is going to ripple across my dark chassis. There's going to be some trickling liquid that's going to start to seep out of the front of my uh, stone face. Uh, And I'm just going to huck two hand axes at them, one at each. All right, go ahead and roll me those attacks. Uh, 25 on the first one. That fucking hits. That is seven damage for that first hand axe. Okay. Um, 19 for the second. That hits. And uh, six damage on the second as I quickly and uh, start... And that's all my movement, but I will continue to run down towards them when I can. Great. Uh, the Both of these axes just lodge themselves into their targets. You find your fucking mark. The first one lands in the shoulder uh, of the guy with the knife and, like, severs his tendon. 
and he like stumbles back onto one knee. He is looking pretty fucking bleary eyed. You have very nearly killed this man. The other one, the axe wedges straight into his neck and he spits up a little bit of blood but no cells the situation continuing to do his job and it is going to be the guard's turns the guard that is has been knocked on his ass uh is gonna stand back up and turn to the other and he says jim what the fuck are we supposed to do but i you you told me they were gonna get down here before we had a chance to deal with these shut the fuck up horace do your damn job uh and he is going to uh, switch the knife to his other hand and go in to kill this woman he does not roll high enough this woman the one who has been poorly bandaged after losing her arm who is kind of this like like she has this like bronze skin tone that has just kind of become this like sallow beige in the intervening couple of days since you guys uh fought with her she like swallows bile and kicks this guy in the jaw and he like stumbles back the other one two threes on advantage that's fucking incredible the man who he's trying to smother bites his hand and he uh, and he punches the guy and knocks him out but does not manage to kill him this turn isaac it is your turn Okay, I want to place, uh, basically put myself in between him and his target. Okay, yeah, absolutely, totally doable. Uh, uh, and then also, bonus act with my bonus action, I'm running up with the shield. The slightest, like you have to be paying attention for the most part, but it's dark in here. But these um, thorns in the vines start growing from Isaac's. Uh, you see around his armor a bit as I cast ensnaring strike. And we are back at the top of the initiative order with guard. Guard, they are both looking bad. Okay, then I'm going to run up to the other guy. And as I run forward, I'm going to take out my axe and use the momentum of my run to try to just cleave into his shoulder. Amazing. Uh, go ahead and roll the attack. This is well, this one will be reckless. Nice. Because now we're, we're, we're close. 21. Yeah, 21 hits. Eight damage total. Uh, guard, what does it look like as you kill this man? I just bring my axe down and it boom, gets sort of stuck in his rib cage, and I use one of the cricket kickers and I boot him off my axe. His body slams against the wall and collapses into the ground as I shake the blood off the axe. Uh, turn to the other guy that uh, Isaac is covering. What's going to happen is I'm going to take the axe, go to swing. I'm going to look at Isaac. And then I'm going to turn the axe to the broadside and go for non-lethal. That's my boy. Oh, so proud. Go ahead and roll. Uh, that's a natural 20. Go ahead and fucking ruin this guy's whole situation. It's actually a billion. Uh, 27 uh, damage. Guard, 27 what, uh, damage. I'm, I'm going to take this one because 27 points of non-lethal damage needs to be a little specific here. Yeah, I don't know what that means. <laughs> you... Bring the, the, the flat of your axe up into this man's jaw so hard and so fast that you can't tell if what is coming out of his mouth are teeth or shards of bone as he goes splaying out into the ground. That tracks. He's unconscious. Um, Are we, at a, are we still on initiative? They're, you fucking killed and they're, knocked they're unconscious dead. the two guards. <laughs> I was just gonna tie up the one that um you you knocked out. I think Isaac would look to our um two prisoners. It's like, oh, lucky we chose to um come early in our interrogation of you two folk. <laughs> oh, she's still God, if you will. I'll take the <clears throat> gag out of her mouth. <laughs> Appreciate it, you son of a bitch. Uh, at least you give it to them as good as you give it to me, eh? Should we be having this conversation here? Who's the bad guy? We're all bad guys, God. Should we just take them out of here before we talk? That sounds phenomenal, actually. I would love it for you to take me out of here. That would be great. <laughs> See, the problem with that, God, is 
whoever sent them after us is upset that they didn't get the mission completed. Mm, true, true, yeah. They're very, probably very upset, yes. And because of that, they tried to um, ensure that no information was gathered by these two. And with my understanding with that would be that you guys are independent contractors of some sorts. Of course we're independent contractors. Will you shut up? And he slaps her. (laughs) He has um, uh, lay on hands to to make her feel better with the uh, since her skin wasn't looking too hot. (laughs) So he tries to like make it seem like he's pissed off and angry and I weirdly feel a lot better. I, that's going to that's going to need to be something that I sit in for a little bit. I usually don't feel good after someone hits me. All that's right, we just be... gonna do this, and he puts the <laughs> gag back. On. I can see I why they had that on. There, I think. Uh... <laughs> All right. So, God, we need to figure out all the information we need. But I do agree that maybe right here isn't the best place to have this meeting. I'm going to grab Isaac and pull him aside a little bit so the yeah. others can't hear me. Sure. I put my shield up so they can't read our lips. Cool. My lips. Which of them do we need to get the information? Do we need the ones that are conscious or do we need the ones who we just knock the teeth out of? If we leave either of these two here, they will be killed. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. see, here's the thing, God. One of these guys mm-hmm. tried to off himself when we were uh, being attacked in the village, correct? That's true. All right, so that guy, already lowest on my list. One of them you killed already, and then that just leaves the two. It feels strange leaving one of them behind, knowing that they'll just get killed, most likely. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Well, you want to carry two and I carry one? I don't know if we need to. I'm going to look to the to the woman whose arm I cut off. She's like having a meltdown right now. Mm-hmm. She's been trying to get your attention for a minute. I'm going to pull her bandana out of her. <gasps> Thank you. Christ, I have an idea. Is this an invitation to speak? Wonderful. Oh, now you're asking if you could speak. Let me, out. let me, l- let me go. I'll tell you everything that I know. Get me out of this fucking hellhole and kill the other guy. Say I did it. I don't like her. That's she, fine. She made, you don't she need made to like that me. plan way too fast. It's a pretty obvious plan. You were planning on doing that prior to us coming here, weren't you? Given half an opportunity, yes. Uh, Wouldn't you? That's the problem. I would. That is literally what I would do. (laughs) I'm going to lean in real close to her. (laughs) Insight check. All right. Yeah, go for it. Isaac does not like her because she reminds him of him. (laughs) He does Uh, not like this feeling. 18. I, I mean, she genuinely seems to think that this is a brilliant idea, and her first priority seems to be get the fuck out of here in one piece. I trust her. God, we need to work on that. All right. <laughs> and um, so I'm killing this one, the one that's unconscious. I mean, probably before we leave, be a good idea. I was talking to God, but okay lady um i mean we don't need to lie she can do it yeah Yeah, that'd be great happy to i'm gonna reach down to the uh manacles that have her Mm -hmm. tied to the table and just tear them off i did Uh, go ahead give me an athletics check (laughs) i do not want this chick free (laughs) uh that's a natural one all right, uh, guard, they are, the whole thing seems to be cast out of a single piece of iron. So you kind of go down to grab it and you like tug against the bolts in the floor. Okay, well, let's, let's give it a sec. Okay, guard. <laughs> yeah, I was we... hoping that's what's going to work. I genuinely, I have, listen, I don't like either of you. You, uh, you cut off my arm. I don't like either of you. But I don't want anything from either of you. I was doing a job. It's part of the damn job. 
Yeah, but who hired you? I let me go, get me out of here, put me on the back of the elephant, and get me, let me go home. And I'll tell you who hired me, or at least I'll tell you what I know. No, I want the information first, and or I just let you rot in here, or the next batch of assassins can take you out. Is this the good cop, bad cop part? No, this is the pissed off cop, and you are just, you know, you are the good cop here, God. You are a great cop. All right, all right, all right. I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you part of the information. Or I could just kill this guy and say you did it, and then you just die anyways. I mean, that's pretty much what's going to happen anyway, so... This is my one shot, man. Yeah, so just give me everything I want, and I'll give you that one shot. Roll me either deception or per- uh, persuasion, but don't tell me what you're rolling. I rolled a two. Five plus one is six. Mm, all right, let me think. Hold on, give me a second. Let me puzzle this out. I can't kill you if I'm tied up here. I definitely can't get out if I'm tied up here. Can you get me back to my elephant? The colonel? The what now? Listen. <laughs> it gets real in her face. <laughs> he makes sure she... This is this is like that uncomfortable eye contact between two people. Yeah. And he's just focusing. I need you to understand something before we continue our relationship. You will respect the chain of command. And when I tell you that your elephant is called the colonel, you will address him as such for the rest of the time that you know him. Do I make myself clear? Listen, small price to pay. The colonel, yes. Could you get me back to the colonel? If I give you the information you want, could you get me back to the colonel? That is definitely something that I prom- I promise you that I am willing and going to do. All right. I- I'm going out on a limb for the two of you. I hope you understand. Cut my arm off. You geez. only have three limbs left. What's another one? You know, you're pretty good at banter. Me too. You should have heard the banter we had earlier. Stop, stop. Focus, God. Focus. (laughs) It was quick-witted. I believe that. Um, All right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. You twisted my arm clean off as it happens. (laughs) I was just getting more and more infuriated. He's like, this is what it's like talking to me? Jesus Christmas. So the first person to reach out to me to do this craziest job was actually that guy over there. And she kind of gestures her head over to the quasi-conscious body of the assassin. His name is Leifson, named by our illustrious patron, Zedais. Thank you very much, Zedais. At first, you wouldn't tell me who wanted to hire my crew. He said that he would be sufficient in the chain of command, that we would be reporting to him. Uh, obviously, that didn't wash. <laughs> I'm no idiot. I need to know who's paying the bills, you know? So I demanded, I said, you take me to your actual employer. I consider the job. You don't take me to your actual employer. I find business elsewhere. Easy. Well, at first he was... Not so pleased with this. He went away. I didn't hear from him for a month. Perhaps more. When he returned, he came with an address. Told me to go alone. The woman I was to meet would meet me there. Crazy ass little place. Had to go down an alley. In through some slats in the wall. And then up a staircase to some abandoned attic. It was a weird place to meet, but whatever. These shadowy types, eh? So I go. Stand around waiting for the better part of two hours. And then she shows up. I I say that she, she quite literally shows up. I don't hear her come in. I don't see her come in. She just kind of steps out of a shadow. She didn't give a name. She simply paid me on sight. All up front, cash. Told me that in about a month and a half's time, 
there would be a caravan coming from the western wilds toward Agrava that I was supposed to interrupt and steal barrels if they had any. She was very specific about barrels. But mostly I was just supposed to do as much damage as possible. And could you give me any descriptors of this woman? Uh, yeah, I'm sure I can. She was, again, the fucking shadows, man. I, she seemed so skittish. She was kind of tall. Taller than me, anyway. Um, I guess... Yeah, I mean, let's be honest, she was dressed like a bloody peasant. But uh, the way she talked, her demeanor, she seemed too too well-educated, too book-learned. There was something I just assumed that she was probably a standing, and that's what I couldn't put my finger on. I hadn't given it any thought until now. She had a sapphire on her hip. A sapphire? It had to have been. What the hell's going on here? What's your name? I suppose I don't have much of a choice, huh? No, that's this whole th- that's this whole thing. Yep, yeah, all right. The name is Waldeck. Rami Waldeck. Rami? Named by our illustrious patron, Natrokas. Thank you, Natrokas. I think June should have a chance to speak to Rami. I really don't want to extend my tenure here if it's all possible. No, we're on our way out as well. You just tag along a bit. Can I tag along from not here? What did I say we were going to do? Right, I don't feel like they're going to take too kindly of me after I killed a bunch of people and escaped. No. I can't just, like, hang out around the palace. You can hide with us. Yeah, we'll just keep you safe. That wasn't part of the plan. I said I'd get you to your elephant. I didn't say how I was going to get you to it. You son of a bitch. Slap her again. What's going to happen next? Who knows? Well, friends, thank you so much for listening to the show. We got a handful of new patrons this week. We have Thaddeus Bomar, Simon Emmett, Kaiser Roll, Kyle Chapman, The Silent Bard, Mike H., Hyena Dragon, Folarin, Akeen Made, Armored Toad, and we have a new defender, Lord Dreamor. And, of course, all of the rally defenders, the might and majesty that they bring Dark Steel Panda, Darlene Wallace, GamerTube HD, Katie Kirby, and the Eldest Barry, and now Lord Dreamore as well. Thank you guys so much for the support. It means the world to us. If you want to check out the new horror arc, Blight at the Museum, you can check that out on the Patreon. Uh, thanks so much. Have a good week, and we'll see you on the next one.